Welcome to Highway Herald, your roadmap to the latest in auto. In December 2022, Ford's CEO, Jim Farley, announced a partnership with 2,000 dealers for the new Model E program. Fast forward a year, and a surprising 400 have already withdrawn. This suggests that EVs, particularly the Mach-E and F-150 Lightning models, are losing their appeal. Let's delve into the six startling reasons why Ford dealers are steering clear of selling EVs. Reason number six, the market is hitting the brakes. Certainly a key factor is the deceleration of the EV market. Ford's EVs, once hot sellers, are now lagging behind. Dealers are seeing the broader picture. The early adopter phase has passed, and production has outpaced demand. With a recovered supply chain and a 500% increase in production, sales are slowing. After years of substantial growth, 2023 ended with a 50% growth rate. However, 2024 began with a modest 15% year-over-year increase, indicating a stagnant market. Ford is facing its own challenges. Despite launching a few EVs, the initial demand has cooled off. The F-150 Lightning, once a hot commodity, has lost its appeal due to its disappointing max range when towing or hauling. This led to a 50% reduction in production in 2024, with the electric pickup now being produced in just one shift. The Mustang Mach-E is facing an even bigger hurdle. Despite producing a large number of these electric crossovers, there's currently little interest. Dealers are inundated with nearly 23,000 models, and at the current sales rate, it would take Ford over 400 days to sell all these cars. According to Car Edge data, the market day supply for the Mach-E skyrocketed to a staggering 404 days in March. Reason number five, the Model E program comes with a hefty price tag. When Ford's CEO Farley launched the Model E program, dealers pledged hefty investments. 261 chose the more affordable certifier program, requiring a $500,000 investment, but with limitations, including a cap on EV sales. However, most dealers selected the Certified Elite program, despite its higher costs and stringent requirements. As the EV market decelerated, some dealers reconsidered their decision. Around 400 dealers have already withdrawn from the program, unable to recoup their investment given the current sales trends. The number continues to rise. In simple terms, such an investment is currently unfeasible. The future of EVs is uncertain, especially after the government's recent decision to scale back its ambitions. The Biden administration no longer aims for two-thirds of new cars to be all-electric by 2032. This shift in strategy, coupled with the enduring importance of the F-Series to dealers, suggests that internal combustion engines will remain dominant in the pickup truck class for the foreseeable future. It's clear that such an investment doesn't make sense at the moment. It's costly, and the future of EVs has become quite uncertain. This is particularly important from the standpoint of Ford dealers, as we all know that the F-Series are by far the most important model for dealers and their steady profits. Reason number four, dealers feel betrayed. Many Ford dealers feel betrayed. While the company was promoting the new Model E certification program, it was also planning to follow Tesla's sales model and bypass dealers. This started with the massive demand in 2021 and 2022 when brand new models like the Maverick and Mustang Mach-E were released. Ford couldn't keep up with the demand, and as expected, dealers capitalized on the situation. It was a time of exorbitant markups, a time when Ford dealers were raking in record high profits. Farley decided to intervene to salvage what was left of the company's reputation. He set out to build a new platform that would offer direct purchases and ensure fair prices. Ford launched a new online platform where buyers can configure their Mach-E, choose financing programs, and more. Even though dealers still have the final say, they are well aware that Ford will soon build distribution centers in big cities and streamline the purchase process, marginalizing dealers. This brings us back to the Model E program and its hefty investment requirements. In simple terms, there seems to be a lack of trust between dealers and the company. So dealers prefer to stick with internal combustion engines and ensure a sustainable business model. Before we delve deeper, we'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to Highway Herald. Your support fuels our passion to create more content like this. Now let's explore reason number three, North Carolina dealers view new program as intrusion. The Model E certification program is not only demanding, but also perceived as intrusive by some. It's no wonder that dealers have taken action against it. Dealers from North Carolina serve as a prime example with 46 of them filing a petition against the certification program. Their dissatisfaction isn't solely about the financial aspect. 
They feel the new program is overbearing and represents a significant intrusion into their daily operations. What North Carolina dealers find most perplexing is the requirement to invest heavily just to continue selling vehicles they're already authorized to sell. As stated in their petition, through the EV program, Ford seeks to coerce dealers into expending huge sums of money unnecessarily in order to continue selling vehicles they are already authorized to sell. Ford's EV program will serve to reduce the number of Ford dealers in North Carolina and further restrict consumer access to electric vehicles, particularly those citizens residing in parts of North Carolina outside of the largest cities. Reason number two, turbulence in Illinois. While most dealers initially opted for the Model E certified program, it wasn't without resistance. The program has sparked criticism and even legal battles, leading to serious trust issues between the company and dealers. Dealers were concerned about the costs of the new infrastructure, and the limitations of the lower tier version of the program were a significant factor in Ford's decision to change some requirements. The situation escalated in Illinois, where the state's Motor Vehicle Board concluded that Ford violated the law by requiring dealers to make substantial investments just to sell electric cars. Concerns range from training costs to the installation of level two chargers. The board argued that no dealer had ever encountered issues charging electric vehicles with the current infrastructure, whether for customer delivery or test drives. Therefore, many of these infrastructural investments are deemed unnecessary. Ford indirectly acknowledged this with recent changes to the Model E program. The new requirements reduced the number of required level two chargers from five to two, and the addition of a new level three charger has been deferred to 2026. Furthermore, Ford cut the dealer training cost in half for this year. Reason number one, Ford puts brakes on EVs. Finally, it's about the company's overall EV strategy. Until recently, Ford was aggressively pushing EVs, aiming to align with the government's strategy of massive electrification. However, it soon became apparent that such an approach is unsustainable for several reasons. Primarily, legacy automakers, including Ford, struggle with the rapid pace of electrification because they haven't yet figured out how to profit from EVs. Dealers clearly see this shift in strategy, indicating that they shouldn't be investing heavily at a time when Ford is pulling back on EV investments to conserve capital. The production of the F-150 Lightning has been halved, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Ford has decided to postpone most of its EV investments for this year, worth around $12 billion. The rush for rapid electrification is off, and the company now plans a more measured strategy with internal combustion engine, ICE cars remaining a primary focus, but with increased attention to hybrids, which are currently growing at a much faster pace than electric cars. In such circumstances, it's clear why many Ford dealers are abandoning the Model E certification program. As for what Ford will do next, we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of vehicles. Don't forget to subscribe to Highway Herald to stay updated on the latest vehicle updates and upcoming videos. See you next time.